The truth is Muhammad embodies submission. Muhammad embodies Islam. Muhammad embodies, I mean, you have to understand that you're talking about 1,500 years ago in some desert in Arabia. And you have this kid named Muhammad. He is restless. You know, uh, and this is a Bedouin tradition, which means that, you know, the tribe and the tribal ethos is primary. In other words, you follow all the laws, all the guidelines of your tribe, because to be an outcast, it means you have to do everything on your own. And there is no chance to survive physically, emotionally, you know, and it's, it's a warring state. You know, people are always coming over to kind of dominate you. So you need the protection of your clan. And so you have this kid, kind of like Kierkegaard. Why am I here? You know, why am I alive? What's the reason for my existence? There is Jewish philosophy in the community, but he's, it's no good for him. He hears of Christian philosophy, but that's no good for him. The Bedouin tradition does, doesn't nourish him either. So what he does is for about 25, 30 years, he just goes into these caves and he sits and he sits in darkness, being alone. I mean, it's a really, really difficult thing to imagine, whether it's the Buddha or Muhammad or Jesus or Moses or Gilgamesh, because they all go through the same stuff. You know, and even today, you know, you get married because marriage has this fantasy that if you get married, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. And like Moses, perhaps one day you'll wake up and you say, well, I don't really want this. And you try to divorce, but it's complicated. So you go back, but then you want to get out, but then you go back, but then you want to get out. And eventually you get out and you get out, you look around, there is nothing. There is no husband or wife. There are no kids. There is no house. You stay in your car. You're living in your car. You said this is no way to live life. But you have come to this understanding that for the first time you realize you don't really live by bread alone. You want something else that life can't give you, at least the life you've lived for the past 20, 30 years. It's a horrifying place to be. And so at the age of 40, after having gone to caves, sitting for hours, you know, on a daily basis, fasting for days. And there is no prayer yet, so you just sit. And sometimes, you know, emotions are very, very intense. You know, and then you kind of just break down and you cry for hours, you scream. You know, kind of like Peter, you know, my God, my God, help me. You know, what the hell is all of this about? And then at the age of 40, something about him happened, it opens up, and he experiences something. No different than Moses, no different than the Buddha, no different than Gilgamesh. All these people have a breakthrough. But this breakthrough comes with a cause. In other words, you have to leave your physical life. And you leave your physical life not because you're mimicking other people, not because you're a plagiarist in thinking and being. Something about you understands, you know, the awful place you are in life and the awful place life puts you in. This experience brings about humility at the same time, it brings about pride. You know that you are blessed. It, it's, it's a beautiful thing. I mean, pride may be one of the seven deadly sins. It is true. But if you have pride for the right reasons, you've played piano for the past 30 years, every night you've practiced, and someone has recognized your sacrifices, your efforts, and says, Zellerbach Theater is going to be yours for about a week, and just sell tickets. And 5,000 people are seated. They listen to you for two hours. You get up, you bow, you feel really good. You have to be proud of yourself. You know, so you have pride and humility at the same time. There is something about Muhammad, Buddha, Socrates. It's like they become magnetic. They have charisma. And they have charisma because they have been touched by something. This is a man who embodies everything. He embodies being part of a clan. He embodies being disoriented being homeless emotionally, intellectually, seeking seclusion in, from the world by going into a cave, sitting there for hours, being tormented by the demons within. 30 years later, not giving up, having faith that something needs to happen. It happened to Moses, happened to Jesus, happened to Buddha. It needs to happen to me as well, if I am sincere and honest. And lo and behold, something happens to him. He is kind of like a Moses, and he has parts of Jesus in him. 
you know, he invites people towards the spiritual part, but also social reformation. So he's like a Costco. You know, he has everything. 